this session, Herlock. So what stands behind Herlock as a legal tech company? What kind of potential do we see in this area? And why it is exciting to find the missing link? We have also a case for you to solve this afternoon um, during the presentation. So find, please, the missing link in the logo of Herlock. We come back at the end of this session to that. So now, how we can find a missing link in 500 federal folders and 100,000 pages of evidence. We are happy to present you our findings. We means Jacqueline Stalin and my name is Jürg Burkhalter. Big data. Here, big data in the courtroom hits the headlines. And what we have done at Herlock, we provided facts. Since 2021, Herlock has been involved in the far largest and most complex white collar criminal case in Switzerland. You might have read or heard about it, it's the Causa Vincenz. The court procedures surrounding Pierre Invincens have exceeded all previous dimensions. A large amount of documents played a major role in this court case. And through her lock, new evidence was also discovered that otherwise we could not have reached the court. How does the problem look like? Sifting through mountains of electronic evidence for truly relevant arguments means an unrealistic amount of tedious work for the lawyer. His client is impassioned and expects results quickly. The software solution available today do not address the real needs of professional users and his or her pain points when looking for crucial facts in mountains of data. They do not solve this problem for the lawyer because they do not know the everyday reality. They have been developed by specialists for specialists and are therefore far too complicated for them as a lawyer. Now, how do the core functions of Herlock look like? Jacqueline will show you how it works. So now I want to show you what this tool, Herlock.ai, is actually doing. And to explain this, I want to start with the three core functions that we have developed last year specifically for this one uh, court case and for this one specific team of lawyers, because obviously they had specific needs and now we are generalizing from those needs. So the three core functions were first of all, a search engine for properly digitized PDF documents. With this, it was actually saving them the work of looking in 500 folders for the one piece of evidence that they were looking for and they could just type it into their computers and have it handy. This sounds trivial, but in this case, it was really a big effort to achieve this date. The second functionality that was really important for them was a document comparison function. So there was one document, actually the bill of indictment. So this is the document where all of the charges are listed. This was a 350 pages document and they received it in two versions, a draft version and the final version. The twist was that in the draft version, we only, uh, it was only in the draft version that we had all of the footnotes properly resolved. So only in the draft version, we knew which evidence was supporting the charges. And then in the final document, we did not have those anymore. So by putting those documents next to one another, and providing the evidence links. So there was an evidence identifier that we were able to match to the corresponding um, file. We were able to save them the work of, um, again, going to all of these folders and looking exactly for this one identifier to have a look at the evidence. So this was a big time saving for them. And the third function is actually like a bucket of function. Um, it's um, ad hoc analysis. 
So when lawyers had specific questions about the documents, we made aggregated analysis and uh, helped them answer those questions. So for instance, we have systematically parsed out information from the emails, like sender, receiver, timestamps, subject line, topics, in order to present them a dashboard that allowed them to briefly analyze who has communicated with whom, at what point in time, and about which topics. What made all of this possible is, of course, a strong data pipeline. A pipeline that is based on various different types of documents, emails, PDF, but also Microsoft Office formats, and is then digitizing from there. We actually had to apply two different methods of OCR because the um, pages were so heterogeneous that it was not a one-size-fits-all uh, approach that was suitable here, but we were actually um, deciding on a page level which OCR worked better. So we applied a heuristic there in order to choose the best form of digitization. From these documents, we saved an image, we saved a PDF, but we also worked with the extracted text and started to enrich the information from there. Some very basic things like um, extracting all of the dates to have temporal information, but also entity recognition and automatic summarization. And based on this data, we have provided a user interface as well as our analytics, our ad hoc um, analysis of the data. Let me dive a bit deeper into um, the entity recognition and why it is a bit uh, specific, why is it a bit special in the case of a legal corpus. So imagine official court documents. We extract an entity from there and in the, the same entity will also occur in other documents but with a different identifier. So for instance, in the official court document, we have the full name of a person. So first name, family name, but even the middle name, the full thing. But then in a protocol where you have to write very fast um, um, to note it down, we only have the initials. And by na nature, those will not be mapped together, right? And then you go one step further, you look at the evidence material, you have emails. Sometimes it's just the email address that you have there. So this is the identifier of the entity. And sometimes we even had um, chat protocols and there it's only the phone number. So you need to bring all of those different versions of the same entity in real life together in order to make it searchable. And we have actually done this matching, of course, initially manually as well. And uh, this was really crucial so that by looking for a name in the search engine, you could really retrieve all of the associated evidence to this one person. So this was really important step. Now I want to give you a brief demo of the tool so that you get, get a bit of a feeling what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Of course, I cannot show you the tool that we have developed last year. It's uh, still confidential. Um, there are some documents in there that are also from uh, the legal uh, environment. It's law texts of the Data Protection Act. And it is an uh, interesting use case because actually the Data Protection Act is currently under revision. So it has a, an old version that is from 92 and it has a new version that I think will come into effect next year or so. So it's interesting to have two versions of this document next to one another. So when the user opens this tool and it's a, a it's browser-based tool on the cloud, he can start directly looking for a keyword like it is in Google. It's actually a bit of a role model for us. He will directly get all of the search results highlighted with the keywords, but also entities mentioned the automatic summary also there. And he can go a bit in depth to look in an iframe at the page and you will again find and the keyword highlighted, but also the entities that we have found and recognized. They have the possibility to uh, switch to a document view where he can navigate back and forth. And again, when he finds a highlighted entity, this will be a link that brings him back to the tool. 
And so with all of these things, it becomes like an internet. Like the document set is created into an internet with inherent cross-links preserved. The user can also enrich the data set by himself by dropping, uploading um, further PDF documents, and then the whole processing chain is triggered. The, the processing chain that we have looked at before. So it is doing the OCR, it is doing the entity extraction, and then it is saving um, the data in the cloud. Then we can briefly double check if it is really there. That's the table of contents, sort of the overview <coughs> of all of the loaded documents. And yes, there are our 75 pages that we have just loaded. So now the last function I am demonstrating here is this uh, document comparison. Some of you will know it from uh, the code editors. They also have this functionality, but for a lawyer, this is really something new and this is uh, not, not normally applied in this context. So this is the first page um, of the new and the old Data Protection Act compared. You see in, in yellow uh, the highlights that have changed, but also the insertions and the deletions. So this just to tease a bit, but of course the vision for the project uh, for the product is much bigger than that. So um, in the vision is also to have, um, for instance, audio files that can be processed by the platform so that you can analyze this material as well. We actually had those type of files in the court case as well, but we were not able to, to digitize them in uh, such a short amount of time but then also make the analytics applications on the other end a bit wider. And I think I just want to talk about two things that I think are very interesting. So one is to take this entity recognition one step further and digitally represent some of the network-like behavior that is going on in a real-world use case. An example are um, bank transactions, actually. So I think every lawyer in this... Uh, in this uh, area and also state attorneys will be able to testify to you how arduous it can be to trace just from bank transcripts who has transferred money to whom and you know how has all of this money moved and uh, if if we could resolve this from the bank transcripts i think this would be a great value add to the product as well and another one is um, technology assisted review I mean, after all, if you have multiple hundred thousands of pages, um, it used to be like this, that people were actually going through those pages and marking for every page, is it relevant or irrelevant for the case? And now we can, of course, leverage AI to make this happen, to make a pre-classification, but it will be, of course, important to bring the human in the loop to have him verify, is this really relevant or really irrelevant? And then have a, a self-learning system that adjusts the model and learns and uh, improves the classifier in the end. Yes. Yes, that how uh, Herlock works. It's really a hands-on assistant for the lawyer. You can ask Herlock questions. He provides you with the relevant results and links, related information, finds connection, creates structure, and overview. So that's about Herlock looking at the legal world. The legal world will change more in the next 20 years than it has in the past two centuries. What does that mean for an e-discovery platform like Herlock? Looking at the market, the global market is huge. So the cost of lawyers in the industrialized world is around 6,000 billion US dollars. Now, having in mind that the <coughs> productivity gain of 10% would mean 600 billion US dollars, which is a huge value. On the other hand, we have a huge increase in compliance costs in big companies. Um, there is a lot of work and the productivity gains are absorbed. So there is another big potential for Herlock. What are the three takeaways of today? So tons of data need to be incorporated 
for lawyers to make their case. Without an intelligent digital solution, lawyers may need a lot of time. And Herlock provides clear fact-based insights to make a compelling case. And you can save time, money, and so on, on top of that. So what does that mean? Without transparency, there is no fairness. And in our complex world, and fast-changing world, this is really important. That was about Herlock. Um, we're open to your questions, of course. We were happy also to uh, see your um, uh, ideas about where is the missing link of Herlock, uh, to get your ideas there. Um, so happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Yeah. Um, thank you for a very interesting talk. I have two questions. So first, how easy is to convince lawyers to use the tool that can actually speed, speed up their work? Yeah. Yeah. And the second Where one is, um, I'm, I'm just asked. And the second one is about the OCR. Can you tell us a bit about the evaluation or the heuristics? Like every market, there are pioneer customers. Um, they are easily to convince because they are ahead of the other ones and there are other ones, you know. And that's with the lawyers the same as in the other markets. Uh, it's not so easy to convince them because they know already how to do their business and uh, a new tool uh, brings new added value but you have to convince in a way that they can uh, use it. So that's a little bit the challenge which we face. So a very valid question, it's not so easy to do that. And, and they are willing to share the yeah. data or the evidence yeah. with yeah, you? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So security is all, uh, it's very important also. Yeah. yeah, and about the OCR, we have actually used the API from Google. So we have also paid for this <laughs> to be able to use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the quality, like text web or Google Vision is good enough? Um, yes, I mean, the thing is, um, Sometimes it didn't preserve like the orientation of text on a, on a page. Stuff like this is a bit more complicated to deal with. But for us, it has worked on average pretty well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, two things. I mean, like the question you asked is the S between the Yes. <laughs> but I mean, uh, <laughs> that's, that's the name of my talk. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, and like my, my serious question was the and you showed this diff of the two documents and kind of highlighted what was added or maybe like the same bits of information mm -hmm. and is this also linked like the dates for instance I saw and maybe other like names or, or whatever else? What do you mean linked? I mean like we saw those two documents and then a date of in one document a date and another yeah. like when it was created for instance so something like um, date of creation or whatever, is it linked to compare those documents or? Yes, it is, uh, you can compare I mean, a certain period of time. Is it that what he means or? or uh, okay. Well, I mean like yeah. this was just an example, maybe yeah, other yeah. stuff, but like so you want to compare, right? I yeah, mean yeah. the challenge there is actually that you ha have to bring the same sections of text yeah. on the same page. Oh. Yeah, maybe the sections is a better. Yeah, and I mean this, this is, now in the generalized tool, it is not yet there. So we actually just we are just taking like the PDF pages, but in the in the case before, I mean we had to to do this actually. We had to do this matching that it was um, you know that the sentences were ending at the right page and we could compare the whole sentences. Oh, and uh, I would actually need to refer you to my colleague uh, Philip Thoman. He will be with us tomorrow at. Uh, Swift text, how he exactly did that. Oh, that but would it be was, great. yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually would have also two questions. So, one is about your OCR to come back to this one. So, I'm guessing you guys have mostly machine readable text already. Say, um, we also had. Or did you have also some handwriting? Yeah, we did document? have handwriting. Yeah. How did you deal with this one? Uh, <laughs> Sometimes it worked, but uh, sometimes I couldn't even decipher it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, then uh, was it something? I mean, where you spent you know, lots of time? In because this I guess data preparation was a big challenge here. It was a big challenge, yeah. And I mean, I don't think we reached the state of complete data cleanness, right? In this case, it, we were also under some time pressure. We had to just 
get to the best solution possible, but we could not deal with every little mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. So I guess you have combined the several OCR because I mean all of these tools have their strengths and weaknesses. So yeah. I guess with yeah, I mean, exactly. this corpus sounds still you know reasonable. I mean there's mm -hmm. others which are bigger, mm -hmm. you know. But I'm just wondering. So definitely data preparation was a, I, I think a, maybe taking most of the time. Oh. So the second one would be about the Panama Papers. They have done quite a lot of, you know, in printing, you know, having this linking of how people behave, especially also with mm -hmm. banking data. So was there something which you guys already incorporated in, in your thinking? Because I mean, there is already, you know, stuff around how it yeah. is done and basically doing quite a lot of say with triples, uh, triple scores and so on and so on. Yeah. Uh, is that something which you doing also here to bring it into this we kind haven't, of but I think it's a good hint to have a look at how it was done back then yeah that's really interesting yeah, yeah we're gonna see check that yeah thank you yeah. I also had a question regarding the, the comparison of document versions if I understand correctly it's the it's the same document the different versions of, mm -hmm. of the document um, and so this can differ in various ways it can differ in uh, can be the same text but in a different layout and it can be a different text in the same layout or it can be different text in a different layout. So do you, how do you go about these differences or do you make assumptions about how the documents differ uh, between the versions? I mean, um, we didn't care about the layout actually, we just cared about the text. So yeah. So you basically identify text elements and then within these elements compare... Yeah, again, it was a bit a challenge where to break up the text. Yeah. This was differing because when you have a huge insert somewhere, then it will shift all of the other pages, of course. But yeah. Um, you mentioned that you um, identify text in PDFs and there are lots of different types of PDFs. There could be a, from a scanner to a document that is automatically OCR. It could be a document that you export from a writing tool yep. and have like metadata and stuff like this, and especially containers in the document mm -hmm. itself. Do you have like different approaches to deal with different types of PDF, or do you just take a picture and process everything as a picture? Yep. I mean, so the way we received the data was scanned. So we were actually relying on the fact that it was a good scanner. <laughs> But then we realized it didn't always work, or sometimes we were just receiving pictures. But I think what is interesting, it even took us a while to realize this, because obviously we cannot go through 300,000 pages of PDF documents and see, is there text? So it took us a while to even realize that there was an issue, and this is when we started sending all of the PDFs also to Google API. And um, how did you process the double column text, or do, did you have any problems with double column text? Um, I mean, we had tables, for instance. Um, we were just taking it as it was from the Google API, just to have, like, a, at least you know the the words there for the search engine. But then, um, for more specific cases, like um, some of the documents, they contained like tables of contents, and we wanted to analyze those in depth. Then we just process them again with a different uh, table reader. Yeah, about the name and entity disambiguation. We're building like different instances of the same person with uh, name, abbreviations, and telephone number, for example. How do you do it? Like, uh, if you input uh, this kind of this telephone, it belongs to this yeah. person. Yeah, I mean, for the case, uh, we did it like this. You, do not, you don't discover it like after. No, I mean, it is it is now the challenge to generalize it, of course. I mean, one way is maybe to already do it with the fuzzy matching. Another way is, yeah, to, to find some, some rules and try to generalize from there. But we really need more data to achieve that, yeah. One last question. Um, what are the requirements on quality regarding this initial versus full name um, matching? I mean, for your case, I guess, uh, you cannot just say E point P is like uh, David um, Peter, but it's like yeah. Yoshu, for example. So how do you go about that? Um, we did have this problem, I think. I mean, in our case, it was like, I mean, we did the entity matching only for like the protagonists, right? Which were like maybe 10 or 15 people. 
and so we didn't actually get there. But of course, this would be an issue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, could be a. We had quite a nice document hierarchy or like classes of documents already. Like we knew which one were the official court documents, which one were from like the, the questionings, which one is evidence material. And sometimes we even knew from whose house those documents were coming. So I think with this, you could maybe drill it out. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks a lot. We have now four minutes as a buffer in case you want to switch rooms. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you.